Amplitude modulation is the process of changing a signal's amplitude relative to the amplitude of another signal over time. Here we're going to use element-wise array multiplication. There are a couple important terms that are used with amplitude modulation. First, our input signal is also called the carrier signal. So we're going to multiply the amplitude of the carrier signal based on the modulator signal. In audio, this modulator signal is usually a low frequency oscillator, an LFO. This LFO could be a sine wave, a square wave, triangle wave, or some of the other kinds of test signals that we've already looked at synthesizing. Let's go ahead and look at the basics of performing amplitude modulation by using an LFO. Here I'm going to go through an example to demonstrate the process of performing amplitude modulation. I'm going to use a sound file on my computer of an acoustic guitar recording as the input or carrier signal. Then I'm going to synthesize an LFO or low frequency oscillator. In this case, we'll start with a square wave and then also use a sine wave to use as our modulator. So let's begin by importing the input sound file. This will be the acoustic guitar recording. Over here in my current folder, this is the file that I'll be using. So we'll use audio read, the name of the sound file, acousticguitar.wave. We're going to assign the result of this function call to an array we'll call in, and then we'll also get the sampling rate. Let's go ahead and plot the waveform of this signal, just so we can look at what we're working with. So we'll call the plot function. We'll use in. Run the script and look at the result. So here's the waveform of our signal. We're currently plotting on the vertical axis, the amplitude, and then on the horizontal axis, we're looking at sample number. One thing we can do is also create an array that's going to represent the time in seconds instead of the time in samples. Let's go ahead and add in that. So let's determine a time vector in seconds. So this will be based on the length of our signal and our sampling rate. So here, create T, and this is going to be equal to an array. We want to start at time zero, and we're going to go up to the length of our signal, and in this case, we're going to subtract one off of it. This is because in MATLAB, our normal array indexing starts at the sample one, so we're going to go one all the way up through the length of our signal, which in this case is going to be uh, 312,346 samples. And we're going to take one off the end and use it as the first one here that has a value of zero. Then we're going to put it on the scale of seconds. So we're going to divide by our sampling rate in this case, FS. Then we just need to take T, transpose it so that it's a column vector. Now instead of plotting the input versus the element number or sample number, we can put in t here. We can plot the uh, input signal versus time. Now in our waveform, we see that our signal that we're working with starts at time zero and goes up through seven seconds. Another reason for creating this time vector here in seconds is that we can use it as part of the process of synthesizing an LFO. So here, Let's add some more to our code. Synthesize the LFO modulator. Okay, let's pick a frequency. In this case, for an LFO, it's typical that we want to work with a signal with a frequency that's less than 20 hertz. So in this case, we'll even pick it to be less than that. How about three hertz? Three hertz, LFO. And you can certainly experiment with other frequencies in this range. All right, next let's create our actual LFO. In this case, let's start with a square wave. It's going to be an abrupt kind of LFO of turning the signal on and off, but it will work as a good example. And then we'll switch over and use a sine wave. So here, put in two times pi times F times our time vector T. 
Now, one requirement is that our LFO has the same exact length and number of samples as our input signal if we're going to perform element-wise uh, multiplication. So that's another reason why we want to create T that's based on the length of our input signal. So we can use it in the LFO. Now let's go ahead and plot the LFO that we created. Here, if we look at the waveform of our LFO, we see that we've created a basic sine wave. It alternates between values of one and minus one all the way through, and it has the exact same length and time as our signal. If we look up here in the workspace, they have the exact same number of samples and dimensions. There is one issue though with the current LFO that we've created. We need to process it in a way to use it as a modulator. In this case, our signal takes on values one and minus one. We're going to multiply these values from the LFO by our input signal. So if you think about multiplying by one, that's not going to change anything about the signal. We'll get the same value. If we multiply by minus one though, that has the result of inverting the polarity. With an LFO modulator or amplitude modulation, the purpose of it is not to invert the polarity of the signal and alternate over time. In fact, the purpose of it is to scale the amplitude. For this reason, we don't want to have the modulator take on negative values. For a simple example with a square wave, let's start out and have it alternate between a value of one, which will let the signal pass through, and then a value of zero, which will cut off the signal, and it will remove or have an amplitude of zero whenever the signal drops uh, during that part of the phase of the square wave. All right, so we need to process the signal. Currently, the amplitude of the signal is too large. Right now it goes from one to minus one. We'd prefer for it to have half the amplitude so that it goes half the, side, uh, the distance over here on the axis. So first thing we'll do is multiply by 0 0.5. This will perform a linear gain change to this signal so the amplitude is not as large. You can run the script and plot the waveform. Now our signal is going from 0 0.5 to minus 0 0.5. So we scaled it to be the appropriate size. The next thing we're gonna do is perform a DC offset to shift it up so that now it just goes in the positive values. So after using multiplication, then we can use addition by 0 0.5. Run the script and look at what we've got for the LFO. Now our LFO alternates between values of one and zero. We can use this to multiply by our input signal. So I'm gonna put in a comment here, perform amplitude modulation. This is going to be element-wise multiplication. So in this case, write our output signal is equal to the input, point-wise multiplication, here with a period before the multiplication sign, by our LFO. Another way we could do this is to use a loop where we index element by element through the input signal and element by element through the LFO and assign it to the appropriate elements of our output signal. But this command will accomplish the same exact thing. So now let's plot two things on the waveform. Instead of the LFO, let's plot the input signal, then let's plot the output signal. We can compare their results. Run the script. And here we can see that our signal is going to alternate. The red is the output signal where the signal comes on. And then you can see that the blue is the input signal that they overlap for part of it. Then the other times we're setting the amplitude to be zero. Now, another thing that we can do is swap out the square wave and use a sine wave. This will sound much better to be used as our LFO. Instead of using the square wave, everything else will be identical, except we'll substitute the sine wave in. The last command that I'll add at the end is to listen to the process signal. So we'll do output and our sampling rate. Now we can run the script and look at the result. <laughs> So now we've completed an example that demonstrates the process of performing amplitude modulation. We synthesized two different types of LFOs that we could use, and then we performed element-wise multiplication to modulate the amplitude of the input signal by the amplitude 
of our LFO.